What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, February 19th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside for the first time, the Reverend Jared Petty. Oh, your brand new Kind of Funny Games Daily host. Thank you so much for coming in and working with us, Jared. Thank you for having me. Doki Doki. Uh, I am <laughs> really, really excited to be here. I, I remember a long time ago, you sent me a text that just said, someday we are going to make content together. Yep. And here, it's happened. Yeah. I have wanted this for a long, long time. I'm thrilled to be here. You have been instrumental in every stage of my career. You've opened so many doors for me. The people in this building are some of my favorite in the whole world. And I can't think of a place I'd rather be right now than at this desk doing this. Jerry, we love you so much. Well, I, I feel loved. It means so much to have you here and to work with you again. Oh, yay. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. So the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen, of course, is that Jared is now one of your cycling, kind of funny, games daily hosts, uh, joining Gary and Andrea and Tim and me in the whole pool. Unicycling. Unicycling. unicycling that's unicycling. where you're gonna yes, be <laughs> or tri i think more, tr more tricycling for me okay I, yeah, I, I'm, yeah i'm really afraid of things with fewer than three wheels sure bicycles unicycles can you not, do, do you not bicycle no, I, I can bicycle i'm scared of them really and I, oh and i'm horrified of bike racks like when i'm behind a car on the highway and it has a bike rack i'm always mm. worried it's going to come right through mm. my window and kill me that's it's one of my greatest one. fears that's yeah. a weird one and an interesting no, I'm one really <laughs> frightened genuinely terrified of bike racks this is not like some, this is not a bit no this is not a bit <laughs> we are I'm not doing a bit right horrified of bike racks uh on top of that, Jared is now the permanent third chair on the Kind of Funny Games cast with me and Tim rounding that out. Which I, I am as excited as I am about this. I think I'm even more thrilled about that. Yeah, I, I just that 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 feels like a marvelous fit. I love the world of games, and every week the fact that you're able to come from so many angles there. Yeah, I, I, Games Cast is just a delightful. Well, the, thing. You know, though, you know, when we got serious about branding every show and having you know being able to elevate our pitch, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Games Cast just being a celebration of what we've been playing recently and like what we love about games. Games, that's yeah. such a perfect fit for you. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, again, that's all of our self-promotion out of the way. We don't need to worry about that. You're the big story. Oh, yeah, I, I'm a story? Yeah, I'm, thank God you're here on President's Day because there's not that much games news happening. So you get to be the big story. Gerardo Densetsu. Okay. Never <laughs> sure. Okay. Sounds bad. Uh, you quit your job. Yeah. You are now a full-time content creator. Yeah, I quit my job. Fri uh, that, I, that's what I do now. Uh, <laughs> Friday was my last day, Yeah, uh, and Monday I'm starting this, so here I am uh, creating content for a living, and I just started something new. It's called Hot Blip and a Jump. Uh, it's a video series that explores... Well, it's a little different than anything else you've probably seen done about games. It's part documentary, and mm -hmm. then it's also part diary, but really, very simply, it's about how everything you love about games is connected. And uh, it starts with a very personal story. The first episode's up right now, and I'm going to move forward with that. Now, I haven't stopped doing Pockets Full of Soup, which is something I really love, but Hop, Lip, and a Jump is something very new. It's video-centric. It's a entirely new territory for me, and uh, it's also my livelihood. So I'm scared to death because I've either just made the best decision of my life or have just made the most horrible mistake of my adulthood. And I'm hoping it's the first. Yeah, I think it's going to be the first. That's you're, that's you're, where you're. I put my chips. Right now, Kevin, can you throw it up? This is uh, patreon.com slash Jared Petty. Oh, my uh, goodness. You can go there and back him. We're going to leave that up today, of course, to do this. Jared's cool. Oh, look, Jared's supporting us. Aww. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I support you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel weird about that all the time. I'm glad you do. Well, I guess... It, it makes sense the way because yours is about your name. I support people on my Greg Miller account, uh -huh. but the kind of funny we've never actually gone through and like contributed as a company. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have a, a separate like a separate account. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think all, we all have our own personal accounts that we go and do. They're all, all blended into one domain. But yes, if if that number could get much much higher, then I could do this for a living. It's seventeen forty eight right now. Now it's up there seventeen forty eight. And that's I think we can get that higher for him, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's incredibly some, generous, by the way. But uh, yeah, I, I would like to be able to make a living at this, so I can you know keep doing. Doing it and uh, the more I'm able to focus on this the more time I'm gonna have to throw into the project as sure. well I, I would really like just this to be what I do uh, if I can't reach that goal then I'll have to go out and do some freelance work and things like that it'll be a little harder to dedicate time to it which you know so I that's why I haven't set my episode frequency yet I want to find out just how much time I'm gonna have to sure. throw into each episode but uh, it's gonna be plenty it's gonna be regular it's gonna be the highest priority in my life it's something I look forward to doing something I've always wanted I've dreamed about this for a long time time there's this wonderful filmmaker a guy named james burke he made this amazing series called the day the universe changed mm -hmm. about how everything's connected in, in the world that we care about and it inspired me when i was a teenager to want to live my life that way this is 
really my own little niche of that same idea done far less articulately and with much lower production value, <laughs> but the best that I can. And, Dude, that's uh, what it's all about. I'm so happy that you're chasing happiness. Thank you. Now, if we do get that number up to a ridiculous... Uh, that, if somehow there there are tiers, you know, there's things yeah, we're shooting for. I'm familiar um, with Patreon. You know how those tiers work and all that. Uh, you know, at, at, at around I think it's eight thousand. We'll, we'll do it. I I'm just gonna well, frankly, boondoggle a trip to Japan and make a bunch of content. Yeah. Um, but if we can somehow get it to ten, and this is the most youth group thing ever. I understand. I grew up in church youth groups. I've had this beard for nineteen years. I grew it. Uh, I grew it the winter of my freshman year in uh-huh. college. I have never shaved it off. Ever. This beard has been a part of me. This beard, I have had this beard longer than I have not had this beard. Untarnished, wow. untainted, this complete beard. If we can get to 10,000, yeah. that beard's coming off. Jesus, God. Oh, my God. Now, I realize <laughs> Be careful. Kevin did this leading up, uh, like in the run-up to his wedding, to show his wife that he, you do not want me to shave for the wedding. Mm-hmm. And God, you did not want him to <laughs> shave for that wedding. Anyway. I imagine, I, re- I have no idea what I look like under here. I'm reasonably sure I kind of look like a left butt cheek. That's my guess. Uh, a left okay. butt cheek with slightly crooked teeth and, and kind of little squinty eyes. That, yeah. that's, that's, my, that's my thought. Okay. But, uh, a lot of people against you shaving the beard. Hey, <laughs> they're like, I'm pulling my Patreon okay, support yeah. just to make sure we don't get but there. But yes, uh, if, if we can somehow, but I realize that's a, that's a real gimmick. However, uh, pitching myself for a, sec, for a second, all gimmicks aside, there really are benefits uh, to the Patreon. Patreon, I do produce some things exclusively for patrons, and I, sure. I think the stuff's good. Uh, Dude, this- I, I, no, no shit. You know, Tim and I both came out to talk to you. Like the episode one of Hot Blip and a Jump is awesome. Oh, like it is awesome, and you. it's like it's. Like I told you. Not in a weird way. It makes me so excited to watch you grow and and explore this format because mm-hmm. th- your first episode available right now on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Jared Petty? Uh, you, or is it, actually, no. It's uh, YouTube.com slash uh, it's still pockets full of soup. Okay. The easiest way to find all this stuff, by the way, is just to go to... Uh, I said sorry about that. It's just to go to hotblipandajump.com oh, or hotblipjump.com. They both work. That takes you to the Patreon. There's links to the video from right. there, or you can just find my YouTube channel as well. It's so good. It's so heartfelt that it gets me so excited to hear it. And like that's the thing too of you know working with you for so long and you know having you on podcasts in the past and then you know up until now. Like I know how good you are at off the cuff. Let's have a conversation. How excited you get and how go to hear you go through something you've scripted and mm. the way it flows. And like when you start in this thing, like it starts in a dark place, right? And then the way you ramp it up to like this super positive message, I'm like, this is so great. Oh, it's a, it's a very personal story. I mean, I do have a private life and a public life. Sure. Uh, we all do to various degrees. People that do this for a living, we are less private about some things. I mean, but I, I have, I've kept this under wraps. I'm married. Yeah, you are married. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. In love and in to, married, a, to yeah. a delightful young woman. Yeah, just, we don't just, say her name that often. Yeah, we I don't. don't want, no. you know, she wants her privacy too. We won't want her privacy. Okay, we're not going to say her name then. No, yeah, All right. No. I, there we are. I thought it was Broomhilda. Uh, Broomhilda. Uh, yeah, was, uh, <laughs> Broomhilda Miller. But yeah, yeah, you mentioned the beginning of the story of the video. I, I thought a lot about whether or not, well, I remember we talked about this, whether yeah. or not I would share that story. Uh, because it does deal deeply with the time I spent in a mental hospital uh, just a couple of months ago. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, I, there's a lot of stigma around that. And also just talking about uh, about hospitalization of any kind. And I think mental illness in particular is it's, it's frightening. It was certainly frightening for me. And I debated whether or not it was the right approach to take, but so much discussions happening right now around mental illness. Yeah. And, and I think that some of it is, is very important. And then some of it, I think maybe the, the bent, the discussion is taking is not necessarily going the most constructive way that it could. Mm-hmm. And, and so I wanted to put my own little piece in there from my own anecdotal experience. Also, I learned on pockets full of soup, that every now and then stories about mental illness and our struggles with that can genuinely help other people. I know I've been inspired yeah. when other people have told me about times they've gotten through difficult things, and I thought it'd be good for me to share mine too. I, I didn't comment on it because obviously we were still trying to like not keep it under wraps that it was you, but I can't confirm or deny publicly up until you getting on the show, right? Uh, over on the Kind of Funny subreddit, they, of course, posted your uh, your uh, uh, first episode, and one of the comments on it that I thumbs up or whatever was like, "I'm going to admit myself this week because of this video." Oh Thank you, gosh. Jared. I hope my I hope my experience is as good as yours or as positive as yours is. I didn't see that, and like that's that's what it's all about, right? Why we come out here and you share so much of yourself because you want people to learn from not your mistakes, but from your lessons. And hey, this helped me, so can I help yeah. you? And like we all struggle with different things. Yeah, I think it is, I, I, I'm really glad to hear that. It helped me tremendously. I. I 
deeply thankful for the staff of the hospital, also some of my fellow patients who, because it, it does become mutually supporting too, yeah. and, and, and patients really helped me as well. But the program was very good. Not not everybody has the same good experience sure. in mental health treatment. And I've been in treatment my, my a lot of my adult life, frankly, but never in hospitalization, which is an entirely different thing yeah. and, and was was quite frightening. Um, but in the in the beginning, extremely difficult and also extremely rewarding. Uh, and the video starts at that and kind of moves through a very strange experience. I did not expect Mario to be such an important part of uh, of, of pulling me out of the darkness. Yeah. And I, it, 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 he did act as kind of a totem and a metaphor, but I, I, realizing he was sitting in a room with me at a time I felt very, very alone was one of the stranger and more illuminating moments of, of my adult life. Well, and, don't, don't give away all the milk. Yeah. Go over there, everybody. Okay, yeah. Go over there. Yeah, I do hope you watch. Watch the YouTube video. There, there's plenty, you know, like I said, they, they, there's there's stuff worth seeing in there. I, I wouldn't have put it out there if I didn't believe that. And I don't think there's anything quite like this. And I, I, I think it's worth your time. I understand you have a, a lot of places that you can throw your support, a lot of places you can subscribe. And right now in the landscape of Patreon, lots and lots of places that you can choose to, to contribute your money. I do think this is worth it. Um, I agree. So thanks. I love you, Jared. That. I, I love you, Greg. And I'm glad to be here at Kind of Funny. I have been a fan of this organization since the very beginning. I was really uh, hoping to say this a few months ago. No, no. <laughs> <I wasn't. laughs> hey, you guys struggled for the first three years, but then I got on board. No, I have so many good memories of the people of the people that are a part of this, the people in this room. I, I, I remember, you know, I, I think about you dumping chips on my head, yeah. but that was long ago. But I think my favorite IGN memory of you still to this day is you and Fran arguing about which of, the, which of you was more vain. You were each sure. arguing for yourself, of course, and uh, and that was a that was a delightful little bit of of self parody. <laughs> I think I Fran really won. That. Fran won, of course. Yeah, Fran's more yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree, yeah. definitely. If you didn't know, this is kind of funny. Games Daily, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, head over to kindoffunny.com slash kfgdb. Part of the show, writing with your questions, comments, concerns, anything about the video game landscape, bad PSN names, squad up, all the jazz that makes this show happen, then watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Remember, if you're watching live, you have a job, you have to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listening on podcast services around the globe. I know a lot of you are here, not for the first time, but watching live uh, in a way you wouldn't because you want to see the new host. Remember, of course, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, you have a free subscription you have to give away every 30 days, we'd love it to be us. Even if you don't use it all that often, it's just free money you could give to somebody. Why not give it to us? Come on. This is a very good plan. Thank you. Housekeeping. Motherfucking Jared Petty is the new host. Woohoo! Kind of Funny Games Woo! Daily. Kind of Funny Games Cast. Support him on Patreon.com slash Jared Petty. We've yep. already got him up to $2,000. Yay! Thank you! Let's keep the number climbing. Uh, more housekeeping for you. Kindoffunny.com has been redesigned. Uh, it, it's a work in progress. It's beta right now. We're working through it, doing a bunch of different stuff on it. But most importantly for you is we've added a calendar there. You can see what shows are happening, who guests will be, when things are going on live. I know we do a lot of content, so you can see when party mode's coming up, what the next PlayStation VR show will be, all that jazz. That's going on. Joey Noel asks if you find bugs and stuff to reach out to her. I, this morning she said she was going to make a, a, a URL redirect, but I don't know if that happened. So just call Joey Noel on her phone. Thursday. I'm hosting the Dice Awards. We'll be hosting that on uh, this twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can catch it there. Me and Jessica Chobot. Also Thursday, of course, a new PlayStation VR show drops. It's going to be for everyone on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Super hot which was obviously our first one for Patreon. And if you want to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games on Thursday, you can get Sprint Vector there. That's going to be riveting. That's exciting. It's a good show. Yeah, I like it. I like VR a lot. And I think we, we've been making some good stuff. I like that super hot. Super hot's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of, kind of, it's, you see a game sometimes you go, whoa, something new. Yeah. And you think about this medium, which at, at this point is 40 years old. And you're like, whoa, I've just never seen that before. That's yeah. rad. You know? Have you played it in VR? What? Uh, no, not in the VR. Yeah. Only in, only in regular. Yeah. In regular is awesome. And then yeah. VR is awesome on a completely different okay. level. I haven't gotten to experience this yet. I'll show so. you. Well, uh, it's up on page. I know you're busy. It's over. And I know you, you support us. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Yeah. So you can go watch it there. Just I'm a gonna, buck. You can watch no, it right watch now. watch the VR. Oh, I thought you were saying, have I done super hot in VR? I, I was. Okay, and I then our never, video is yeah, us playing okay. in yeah, you, Oh, I understand. I, okay, I, okay. I understand. See, we make YouTube yep. videos here. I understand. You do okay. make YouTube videos. Videos on the internet. We make quality internet videos. On Gopher? 
You put them on Gopher? No. No, no you put them on, on uh, Mashable. Alt, or alt dot rec I'm, I'm dot big on Dig. Funny. We're big dig. on Dig. Big on the right Dig. Now. I remember yeah. the Dig. And final piece of housekeeping this week. We're sponsored by Patreon.com slash Jared Petty. Whoa. Go there and support him. Oh, that's nice. We didn't have a real sponsor, so I thought uh, I'd put that in there this time you. around. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you so much. And all of you, thank you for letting me be here. I'm so privileged to have this opportunity. I, I, I really just, you let me live out my dreams. We'll tell you more about our sponsor later on. But for now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time, Time for some, some news. news. No one's ever done it with me. No one's ever done it with me. I love you. Oh, thank you. I was uh, excited to do it. There are two items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. A baker's dozen. <laughs> Number one. Let's talk about loot boxes in Rainbow Six. Oh, sure. <laughs> have you ever heard about loot boxes, Jerry Penny? I might have heard of loot boxes. Okay, I, I've heard of those uh, every now and then. And by, yeah, I've heard of loot boxes. <laughs> Uh, this is an article via MCV. Rainbow Six Siege game director Alexander Remy has spoken up about the planned paid outbreak loot boxes coming to the game for the length of the outbreak event, defending their inclusion. The paid... The paid-for loot boxes will be available in addition to the pre-existing and free Alpha Pack loot system for the month-long Outbreak event. It is Rainbow Six Siege's first paid loot, paid for loot box. I don't know. That's interesting how they're describing paid for loot box. Although players have been able to pay for cosmetic items with real money and in-game currency since launch. Quote, I feel like the loot boxes act like a gift shop after the roller coaster. Remy says, explaining that the team's golden rule with regards to loot boxes is that they shouldn't impl- impact the gameplay in any way. I am feeling very empathetic towards players upset with this, but at the same time, I do not feel we are cheating anyone. I don't think we are being greedy whatsoever. The loot boxes, which will contain purely cosmetic items, have attracted some criticism from the community. They'll be added to the game on March 6th and available for purchase until April 3rd. Our full interview with Remy will appear in the March issue of MCV. Oh, there we go. There's some news. What do you think of it? I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with cosmetic loot boxes. I, I think cosmetic loot boxes can add a lot of value to a game. I think they're fun. I think that any chance to just make things look a little cooler, that's yeah. fine by me. I, I really am good with that. So I think it's a decent fit. Now, I understand you're already able to buy cosmetics. What I'm never a fan of is taking something away. There's something already available. It's not don't content it, that already yeah, happened. Don't decontent it. This is what happened with Destiny, of course, right? Yes. Where it was like, hey, sh- you already know what shaders are. Mm-hmm. Now we're completely changing them for Destiny 2. And everybody's like, wait, why? Yeah, so don't take things away. Just, just keep giving out a keep giving out new things anything you add that's cosmetic i think is fine yeah. i'm all for games getting bigger and having more to do I'm, I'm great with that and if a developer wants to charge more for a cosmetic item like that, that that's great by me what about you i it's i think uh the church, where we are right now is evident in this story and the mm-hmm. fact that just saying loot box right mm-hmm. people flip out and freak out and think immediately jump to the conclusion that it's gonna be the worst thing in the world mm-hmm. Personally, as somebody who doesn't play Rainbow Six, I don't have a horse in the race. Mm-hmm. I would always rather it be that, yeah, okay, cool. There's cosmetic items, and rather than charge you 99 cents for a loot box and a random drop, mm-hmm. we're just going to put the item up and charge you 99 cents for that. Yeah. I'd prefer to be able to take my money and just buy exactly what I want, mm-hmm. but I'm not against this. Again, what they're, they're saying the right thing. It's just cosmetic. It's whatever. It's for this event, and as somebody who isn't dialed into rainbow six i don't really know much about the outbreak event if that's what they want to do and they want to make it this it's a limited time thing it's a special hey everybody try to get it during this okay it's not how i would prefer to get the content but i'm not angry about it i I think you and i fall in a pretty similar camp with that likewise i'd rather just have the option to buy something even if it's pay a little more for it i'd rather just have the option to buy something up front but if a developer wants to do it a different way i really am okay with that i i think that I think that it's all right for there to be more. But I understand why people have been angry about other things that have happened around sure. this. But I think in the case of cosmetics, again, it's a skin. You know, yeah. it's, it's a dance. It's, it's all fine. It's, it's, all, it's all right. Well, it's, oh, you know what I was talking about on the show is that the DLC I'll buy when I like Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. I keep looking at the store for are they putting up new stuff because I'm so in love with Monster Hunter I want to give them money however I can yeah I would prefer it to be like hey here's this new armor this I don't care about the gestures but like here's this cosmetic armor pack or whatever we're going to sure. do or however it's going to roll out I'd love to give them money for that rather than get a box that I have to worry about like well is it what I want or isn't because then it's the thing of like I, you have to set your limit, and it's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna only roll these loot boxes to try to get the skin to the five dollar mark, and then mm-hmm. you get to the five dollar mark, and you're like, well, I haven't got it, but I was, and maybe I'm closer than get to getting it than ever before, and like, ugh, it's just a pain in the ass. I, I again, this resonates with me. I, I think we're pretty much on the same page here. It's just gonna be two guys agreeing back and <laughs> forth uh, because I, I really. 
most of the time in games, I don't buy things incrementally. I want the big pack. I want the whole thing. Yeah. I don't want to buy 20 little things. I just want to go ahead and buy the bundle or not. That's the kind of purchaser I am. But if it helps the developer keep making a good game and yeah. it doesn't affect gameplay, yeah. fine. You're coming over from the other side of the industry, right? Mm-hmm. We're the enthusiasts. We're the, the fans. You can come from like now the development publisher side, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a matter of fact, just as a disclosure, at this point, uh, I still own stock in EA. I haven't sold that yet. So I think that for the sake of transparency, people should know that while I'm here on uh, Mike. That'll, my plan is to sell it, but I haven't yet. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I, we never even covered that. But, so you worked at IGN. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Left IGN, yeah. ended up at EA. Now you're coming back into yeah. this world or whatever. Do you think the earth is salted when it comes to loot boxes? Can we ever go back to someone saying, we put a loot box in our game and not have it be, let's go to pitchforks and torches immediately? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, because I, I think that I think that lives are long and this, uh, this, this industry is maturing very quickly sure. and that things change pretty quickly. Think about the state of video gaming a year ago. Remember when the Switch was going to fail? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Remember it was going to be terrible? Remember there was no software and Nintendo wasn't telling us anything about it and it was just going to fall flat on its face and it wasn't going to be virtual console and it wasn't going to work and it wasn't going to have Netflix and it wasn't going to... And so all the rest of it just doomed it from the start. What a good... You know, a year later, it is the darling indie platform of a generation and has best at least... Best-selling console in North America Yeah, ever. and yeah. at least three of the best games of the last 12 months have come out on the thing. Maybe more. I, it, it's exceptional. So... Yes, things change very quickly. What's uh, you know what's the old uh, the old French phrase? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, I think that absolutely you can reach a place we have a different idea about this because we talk about the earth being salted. But again, I don't see too many people screaming about Overwatch. You know, sure. it, it, there's plenty of ways to do it right. I feel yeah, that's the thing. I think 2017's fall was just a couple different big AAA games doing it wrong, mm-hmm. and that is what then led to this backlash. Where it, it, for a while, I think people were so concerned about worst case scenarios that then when they kind of started, a couple of them happened. It was like, well, fuck this, we're done with it forever. Blah blah. Like mm-hmm. microtransactions and loot boxes aren't inherently bad. No, not at all. They can be used correctly, as you point out, with Absolutely. Overwatch. Absolutely. There's a things. lot of good ways to use them. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep our finger on the pulse of that one for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number two, the System Shock Remaster has been delayed. This is via Game Spot. Night Dive Studios System Shock Remaster was expected to release this year on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. But a recent update from the team says otherwise. The remaster has been delayed again, and the development team is on hiatus. That's all bad news. <laughs> On a Kickstarter post, Stephen Kick, CEO of Night Dive Studios, takes responsibility for a change of direction, which is why he decided to put the team on hiatus to reassess its vision for the game. Kick also makes it clear that the remaster is not being canceled. His update does not detail how long the team will be out, nor an expected release date. Quote, maybe we were too successful. Kicks update states, maybe we lost our focus. The vision began to change. We moved from a remaster to a completely new game. We shifted engines from Unity to Unreal, a choice that we don't regret and one that has worked out for us. With the Switch, we began envisioning doing more, but straying from the core concepts of the original title. Please accept my personal assurance that we will be back and stronger than ever. System Shock is going to be completed and all our promises fulfilled. Uh, for recap then in 2016 night dive studios created a kickstarter campaign for a remaster of the 1994 game system shock the team released a trailer to their vision uh, of their vision done in unity beside the campaign which gained over 21,000 backers and raised 1.3 million dollars a third system shop game system shock game is also supposedly in development by x looking glass and bioshock developers Thoughts. All right. Well, uh, first, I back a lot of things on Kickstarter historically. I'm a big fan of Kickstarter. And one of the things I've learned is not all the projects I back happen the way that they're supposed to or happen the way they're originally projected. Because that's the nature of development in any creative or artistic project. I launched an artistic project today. It could crash and burn. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that while we do our best, sometimes things don't turn out the way they could. Sure. I could get run up by a run over by a bus bus tomorrow. There will be no episode two. You know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. my hard drive could crash the night before I'm supposed to debut my second episode and it's not going to come out for another month. Things like that are going to happen. Of course. And in game development where you've got even a small team involved, it's infinitely more complex. So I tend to be very forgiving 
of experienced people who go in with a pretty good plan and genuinely try to do something and that it doesn't quite work out. It can be frustrating because you're sitting there losing money. You've paid for something. You don't get what you thought you were getting. Anytime that happens, it's frustrating. But I also think that it's one of those things in life, it's kind of like where you've got to decide whether you don't want it to exist at all all because it annoys you yeah or you got to put up with the fact that sometimes it doesn't work out the way you wanted so that other things can it's never going to be perfect and i think kickstarter's very model kind of lives and dies by that principle i would rather live in a world where some projects fail but some succeed and great things still happen because some really great stuff's coming to kickstarter that's made my life better i I, i'm going to get bloodstained because kickstarter happened I, i i got um Jeez, I got Broken Age because Kickstarter happened. Yeah. A lot of other wonderful stuff. My take on this is I want a new System Shock game. And if this doesn't work out, I'm going to be sad. I don't think I actually backed this one. Uh, mm-hmm. So maybe this is my fault. That it just you had did. My, yeah, they, 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 well, no, you're right. They were too successful, according to him, right? Maybe yeah. they were too successful. But I mean, I, you can see how you can see how development would, you know, it's, it's the oldest story in the book. You read any book about game development, and you hear stories about scope just sliding yep. out of control. And a very small mistake, you know, months and months early in planning can potentially suddenly cartwheel into something much much bigger and suddenly you got a problem that that's just too big to handle it sounds like that's what they're describing here and they're going to try to find a way around what do you think greg it's a tale as old as time is at this point right you back something on kickstarter and then it seems to not go the way it's supposed to Mm -hmm. i saw the article i didn't make it to kind of funny games daily a a few weeks ago on kotaku though about that uh portable nintendo switch dock that mm-hmm. people backed and then when they finally got it it didn't look anything like it was supposed to it didn't work sometimes all these different things and it was super late and Nico had already beat them to the market it's what i credit them for and uh, steven kick here is being transparent and being open i don't know how late this is in terms of like you know have people been demanding an update were there no updates whatever he's out here owning it and explaining yeah. what's happening and if you're communicating to your audience, I feel that's where, okay, you get more and more slacker. You know what I mean? You, the people give you the benefit of the doubt. I was trying to be pretty transparent here, and I appreciate that. That's what I see in this anyway. And also, you know, I think about this. I, I want I want people to continue to believe. I want them to hope. And I don't want them to hope baselessly or blindly. But I'm, I'm sitting here with a, you know this behind me right now because I'm hoping to make a living. Yeah, through yeah. Other, so, so how can I not go, yes, of course. But I, I have several dreams. I want to make a documentary series. I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. I want to write a book. Uh, that's that's next down the road. In the end, if I fulfill my dreams, I want to make a game, Greg. Yeah. And if I'm going to make a game, I'm probably going to have to look to a platform kind of like Kickstarter. Sure. And people are going to have to take a leap of faith because at the beginning, I'm not going to have a product. And at the end, God willing, I am. Yeah. But well, it's also, I mean, this speaks to like what you're talking about with scope and something we know from being on the side of the industry we are and having the conversations we have with developers. Yeah. But the fact of, you know, well, like, what is it? I think the old adage is like, when you go into a game, some like 60% of what you think the game is going to be <laughs> cut away and never be there, let alone the fact if you get in like they're talking about, right, that they went from just doing a simple remaster to a reimagining of the game, which changes everything, which is going to do differently, let alone the fact that every game gets delayed. Right, it seems like every game's fucking delayed. Game development is a process of unthinkable complexity, even really simple games. I mean, think about, okay, so I I don't want to, I don't, geez, uh, my brain just went dead for a moment. Uh, You're fired. Yeah, I know. Well on my way. Uh, I'm sitting here wanting to say Story of Seasons or Harvest Moon because I'm completely forgetting the game, uh, the, ver- the name of the superior one that's on Steam that I play. Uh, what Stardew Valley. One? Thank you. Stardew You're Valley. Welcome. Joey Noel just perked yeah, up somewhere. I know. What's, what's wrong with my brain right there? Um, it's all the coffee. I haven't had this much coffee in a while. Anyway, Stardew Valley, uh, you know, a fairly simple looking game, enormous complexity yeah. Oh, yeah, under yeah, the yeah. hood, developed by one guy, but... It took years and years and years mm-hmm. of 10 to 14 hour days, seven day weeks, just sitting there grinding and grinding and grinding away. And that's a fairly simple game, technically speaking, sure. compared to what you're going to see in something like a, a System Shock remake. Yeah. I don't know what to do with that. One thing goes wrong and off it pivots. Yeah. And, and uh, I just, I think we got to have... So openness in our hearts for the fact that the best of intentions don't always turn out the way we uh, think they're going to. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's kudos to them for sp- talking it out. I think they're saying all they're telling you what's going on, which is great. And the fact that in 2016, they launched this Kickstarter. Well, I was like, I didn't, I, as somebody who, again, not really paying attention, 2018 for somebody trying to remaster or remake that game. I was like, I don't know if that's yeah. a real date. You know what I mean? It's the same way of when ever somebody comes out with a date and you can look at the scope of the project, let alone how big the studio is. <laughs> we'll figure out what's going on. 
Now, Jared. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't prepare you for this. I'm sorry. Oh, oh I, I never prepare any of the guests. But this is the last time. I'm. I'm okay. So I'm mollified. So what I'm going to do here is is do a really really bad transition. Okay. And then you just got to read everything that's highlighted. Everything like, that's highlighted or, here. or underlined. I guess. Okay. Right? Underlined. Here we go. So I'm Jared, gonna... I'll tell you what. Whenever this System Shock remaster comes out, I'll be excited. But it's still so far away. If I wanted to know what came to the digital mom and grop shops today, where would I go? I believe I'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. That sounds familiar yeah. somehow. Familiar somehow. Does it? Yeah. A lot of our things sound familiar. From someplace. Man, it feels like we just ripped off an old show we used to. Out oh, today! Yeah. Soma on PlayStation 4 is getting a safe mode. All the other platforms have this except Humble Bundle. This, of course, allows you to play without uh, the enemies, hostile enemies invading your game. All marriages should have a safe mode. They should. They yeah, should. It's very important. Uh, it's a Monday and a holiday, so that's the only thing I could find that was out today. Okay. Tomorrow, big day, including Metal Gear Survive. What the fuck? Really? That's tomorrow? Yeah, that kind of snuck up on me. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Yeah. You know what, Jared? What's that? Since I've done that, let's kick it over. To a listener who or, wrote in uh -oh. to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. His name is Bim Crimley. Bim Crimley says, I played the Metal Gear Survive beta all weekend long, and let me tell you, I was enamored. Before I knew it, five hours had passed. My friend and I were playing the same map over and over and completely lost track of time. Have either of you played the beta or watched any gameplay? And more importantly, do you think this game will fail all because of the whole Konami Kojima kerfluffle? Bim, I, I have opinions. Lay it on me. All right, so I have not played the game. I have watched some of the gameplay. I think there's a chance this could succeed, and I don't think that uh, it's necessarily uh, going to be a bad game. We're going to see what happens. I haven't got hands on here, but I think that as frustrated as people can be about the meta drama around something, a good game is a good game. Yeah. If this game is solid, if this game is fun, is this game is something you enjoy playing with your friends? then I think it should succeed, and I think it probably will, because people are going to look and say, huh, what do you know? They nailed it. Hideo Kojima is not the only person who can make a good Metal Gear you game. You get the fuck out of this house. Hideo Kojima <laughs> is the, the reason... Fuck out of here! <laughs> he's the reason we've had Metal Scott, Gear. He's the reason. No, no, no. I, I, you know what? Someday we got to hand it over, man. I and mean, the same guys that made Mario Odyssey are not the same people who made Super Mario Brothers. That's not how it works. You got to hand it on to the next generation. I'm completely okay with that. The man is a true auteur. He's a genius. He's amazing. He changed my life. But you know what? If somebody else can do a good job, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Now, if on the other hand, the game is dog crap or even mediocre, then I could have less than no interest. This is a game that I am waiting to hear a bunch of people say is wonderful before I'm even going to touch. That's the only thing I'm concerned at from my end is that without Kojima's involvement, my assumption is that this is just kind of be something that was shoveled out yeah. with a name stuck to it. Yeah. If that's what it is, nah, who cares? But if it's good, then it deserves to succeed and we should play it. I played at E3. And that was the only time I've touched it. Okay. I didn't do any, any of the betas. And again, it is completely snuck up on me. I remember them announcing a release date. I just felt like I would have heard more about it leading into this. Uh, what I played at E3 and Tim played with me, it's Metal Gear Solid 5's controls, right? Mm -hmm. Which are great and awesome. Yeah. But it, we were playing the weird like Fortnite, the old school Fortnite of like build, you know, defend this base against these pyramid head guys coming at you, little triangle heads. Okay. And it was weird. That's you know I mean that was the thing and it I, it was just weird to be playing this game in this world and not being I can't understand it now was it fun eh. okay so there you go if it's eh. but I mean I'm not am I that kind of guy Fortnite save the world mode never enticed me to play it but when they put in battle royale I was like oh that's not right yeah okay yeah. and so that's the thing is there is a story mode to this is it gonna be interesting I know it's just like offshoot you know whatever else world's tale of Metal yeah. Gear all right I look into it but it's. Where are the copies? Where where are the reviews? Why how why is it not being promoted? Like yeah, the, the fact that it kind of snuck up on us does worry me. Um, yeah. Now I don't know if that comes down to some kind of of marketing strategy in Konami or some kind of strange ineptitude or just a desire not to show it to people. Yeah. Or well, we don't they, matter as much as we there think was we do. at IGN. I don't know if it was a full on first, but I know IGN had like a week of coverage because I remember McCaffrey tweeting out about like yeah. I don't understand why people are so angry about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why is it so many thumbs down right now? Well, yeah, because and he understood the Kojima thing, but it's like really that's why we're we're going to do to this game well yeah i mean it's just been so public and, and it yeah. was terribly handled uh, yeah. and i understand people being angry at the company i'm not trying to say that you should just you know hold 
it's all right not to want to buy something because you're mad at a company. Yeah. I don't buy things because I'm mad at certain companies. Absolutely. But I do think that if somebody's trying to turn a corner, you go for it. And if they're not, and obviously trying to take advantage of you, walk away. That's why I read game reviews. Yeah. That's why I listen to my friends. I wait to find out if something's good before I buy it 95% of the time. The lack of buzz scares me in terms of what is, what's their plan with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, are they just sending this out? Was this just a grab? And then it also scares me in terms of what, what he's asking. Is it going to fail? And I think it, for what they've pitched that as is mm -hmm. this online thing. Like, yeah, if, if nobody, if you're not hearing about it right now and people aren't super stoked and the fact that, yeah, the beta was running, they, this is their second beta yeah. and people usually when they're playing something they love write in about it to me or tweet me about it, especially Metal Gear. Yeah. And the fact that you, the one guy Bim did, that's all I've heard really about that. That's, that's a bad sign. Is it just that, I mean, is it just that it's being buried by the fact that so many other things are happening right now in multiplayer gaming? I mean, Possibly. that space is crowded right now. Right. Uh, games have more longevity in that space than they previously have. And there's a lot overlapping at the moment. It could just, could just be that. But um, I mean, that speaks to, well, I mean, that'll still be the case, right? Tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Tomorrow it'll come out and it's like, well, I'm still investing in Monster Hunter. I'm still playing Destiny. I'm waiting on this Rainbow Six event. I'm playing League or Dota or whatever. Yeah. And that, that happens. Is. Sometimes it happens to middling games. They come out surrounded by good games and then they don't yeah. get played. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, that was it. New dates for you. Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 slide on in the Nintendo Switch May 22nd, uh, complete with Amiibo support and new features. David Scott writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, Greg, and question mark, exclamation, question mark, as Kevin put in the description. He means you, Jared. Oh, I thought he was just speaking Qbert. No, 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 That's no, how no. you write my name in Qbert language. Mega Man Legacy Collections 1 and 2 got a release date of May 22nd. I'm honestly hyped for them because yeah. I didn't get to play all those games as a kid, but I now enjoy them as an adult. You're stoked about this as well. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. absolutely stoked. Oh, it's Mega Man, man. Those games are fantastic. Um, they are consistently high quality across the series. Yes, there are some duds here and there, but generally speaking, most of the 2D Mega Man games are really good. Yeah. Uh, all the way up to groundbreaking and fantastic. Uh, and unlike a lot of old games that you go back to and kind of like, eh, I got to put up with a lot here, a lot of those still play well. Uh you thoughts? I I was a Sega Master System kid, ah. right? So I totally miss, missed all the Nintendo Core stuff. Uh, well, then you're just going to talk about Zillion. I exactly. Think. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Kidd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but so then, uh, you know, I missed the Mega Man stuff. When okay. Mega, Mega 9 came out, I remember playing it and being like, I just... Don't this is I'm this is another language and I'm terrible at it and I hate it and like I didn't want to play yeah. it. When Legacy Collection dropped, of course, Colin was super stoked, so he wanted me to play it and I mm -hmm. jumped in and I was just like when I sit down to my PlayStation, my big TV, this isn't what I want. It being on Switch is one of those, yep, great. I'm it gonna just, I'm gonna download them and be there and like let's try to I'm gonna be on a flight and be like let's fuck around with this let's actually do it in the same way like I'd play Celeste anywhere but Celeste is so good and being on the Switch is so fucking perfect yep. I'm like yeah I'm in yeah I, I'm interested how the stick picks up I, I really mm. am I'm wondering how that's gonna work I'm gonna bet they got that right because it's you I don't think you'd want to ship that without it and I'm not sure that Nintendo well, I mean, will, people are gonna be hard on you right exactly. like they know what a Mega Man's supposed to feel like I don't think a bad Mega Man game can ever come out again on the Nintendo console after they switch the buttons on the old yep, GameCube one. That just that can't happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I go back to the original Legacy Collection and the work Frank and those guys did on it and, and yeah. how hard they worked to make it a high fidelity thing. Yeah, I'm an old dude that loves old video games, but man alive, did they nail it. They provided historical context. It's beautiful. It has non-obnoxious filtering that you can turn on and off that actually enhances the experience instead of takes away from it. The save states help, help wonderfully. Ah, uh, and there we get to the heart of the question jared petty you ah. walked right into my snare trap <laughs> david scott continues and says but having them on the go will be amazing i personally don't use save states that are added to remakes like this as a new feature what is your opinion on this feature being able to save your game anywhere and be able to just load a save up and redo it the part if you die scoff I had the scoff, but that's what I'm thinking. Play wrote. a game any way that's fun for you. You're not a real gamer. That's your problem. Play that's what game. David Scott's saying. That's Play. what I'm saying. No, I'm okay. You I'm know what saying. I don't care about? Trophies. Get the oh, fuck. Oh, what? Yeah. Kevin, do you not vet these new employees? Yep. He said he was good. Yep. He, he bamboozled us. <laughs> I, I, I don't even. There are times I don't even bother to log in to play a game. Like I, well, just, then you're I, fucking up your saves I'm, on top of it. They can't uh, yeah, even well, that. It's, it, I know. I, I'm weird. You're but really yeah, I really, weird. I care nothing about trophies. But they enhance so many people's right. experience that I'm so glad they exist. Save states. I use them. 
I didn't used to when I was a kid and I played these games. I've suffered through that. I don't have to do it again. Yep. If you don't want to use save states and that makes the game more fun for you, don't use save states and have more fun. I, you know, Do what makes the game enjoyable. Isn't that, when you sit down and think about video games, isn't that what's so breathtakingly awesome about games now? That it is an avenue for everyone and anyone in however you want to play a game, whatever mood you're in, whatever you, you can find that in gaming. Yeah. Because what I always go back to is I love safe states in games like this because that was always a huge turnoff to me in games of like, I don't I, like I love death and return of Superman. I don't want to have I remember <laughs> setting aside Saturday mornings of like, I'm going to try to fucking beat him. I'm going to mm-hmm. try to beat Cyborg and everybody and like play through that entire thing and die somewhere and lose a life cheaply and be like, fuck, I got to do this all over again. Mm-hmm. I know I can't beat the boss. Like, like I hated that. And if gaming had never evolved past that, I wouldn't be here. I yeah. would not. I, it would have been like it is so many other people, a toy that I would have played with for a while. And then I'm like, well, I've outgrown this. This isn't hitting all the checkboxes I want for enjoyment. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel that way. I mean, there are games for there are games where losing or or screwing up or death is a part of the process of playing the game Mm -hmm. any any shmup uh, any roguelike sure those are about failure yeah and coming back and trying again and again and again so maybe save states wouldn't work in a game like that I understand that but maybe somebody still has fun playing them that way yeah and and if they do that's fine yeah it's time I like what you said isn't that what's great about games right now this medium, this interactive medium, allows us to do so many things. You can't get away with that in a movie. I mean, other than skipping to the end, and then you have no context. Yeah. You can read the last page of a book, but again, you don't have no idea who these people are. But in a game, because of the inherent interactivity, you can do so much of this kind of stuff and enjoy it so many ways. It's one of the things that makes the art form so beautiful. Yeah. Continuing on, new dates for you. Arc System Works has teamed up with Japanese game director and writer Swiri. That's how you say it, right? Swiri. Uh, for a new project in 2018. I believe this is from IGN, by the way. Hmm. From the mind that brought you Deadly Premonition to life, or so the mind that brought <laughs> Deadly Premonition to life, an ambiguous announcement for The Missing. Quote, the title, The Missing, has many meanings, Swiri said. A missing person, someone who's lost, or even something lost. Maybe it's your loved one, loved one. Or a place you belong. Do you ever feel lost in your everyday life? The missing is for someone like you. Oh, I mean, I, that's that, everyone, right? That sounds like a swearing game for sure. Like, yeah, it, I mean, it, has not everyone felt lost in their everyday life? Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm assuming too much. No, I, no, we all have, yeah. I yeah. mean, I got lost on the way here, so <laughs> definitely. You know. You're also way too early. That's a good point. I, I was, was drinking very, my coffee with my wife. I finally looked at my phone. I'm like, uh-oh, Jared's I, at the office now? I woke up at 4.30 this morning. Jesus. I didn't sleep much last night. Yeah, yeah, and it's I, a big day. Yeah, I was doing all the setup for this, and it's a big day, and I was terrified, and I was like, have I? You know, it's... it's, it's, it's you were lost been, right there. You've been there much more. I mean, Lord, you've done this. You've done this on a oh, far yeah. grander scale. No. You know? and, and it's Same extraordinary. Scale. So, but uh, yeah, I... I I going back to that. You know what? It's it, the words "deadly premonition" were in there, so I'm in. Yeah, right? that's that's really about yeah. it. All right, I, I just yeah. Let's let's let this happen. Now here's one for me. This is the next one from Gamespot. Uh, Remedy's new project, codenamed P7, is slated for a 2019 release. The third part person action game was referenced in the company's financial statement and is currently in production and progressing according to plans. I love Remedy. Yeah, I like Quantum Remedy Break too. was a great game that did not get enough love. Did not get because it was part of that weird gen one xbox one stuff mm-hmm. like oh it's tv and a game ha- mashed together but on top of that max Payne, like remedy's so great i can't what wait oh, have, alan wake too man have you guys ever just done a mutt white a mutt white have been there we are what might have been yeah uh, about that first year of xbox one if they hadn't bundled connect in there and marketed the way they did yeah what, what uh, well this? i go the opposite way where yeah. uh, my, uh, the what if i would have lo- i would love to have seen would have been Everybody bristles and hates Connect and doesn't want the TV stuff yeah. and doesn't like the game sharing thing or whatever. And Xbox says, no, sorry, this is our vision. We believe in it and mm. we're going to make you believe in it. We're Because I feel like that's what fucked them. And I know I'm not trying to be a dead horse is that they listen to all that. and We're like, oh, fuck, sorry, we'll change everything. Yeah. And it was like, wait, why would I buy your box if you don't believe in it? Like, I'd rather see, see them be like, I hear you. We understand you don't like it. Let us show you why this is awesome. Let us show you what we're doing. That's rad. The now defunct uh, one uh, uh, did. Uh, they used to have these theme weeks. Yeah. yeah, rest in peace. Well, when you worked there, as a matter of fact, over at IGN, they did a, a theme week that was entirely gaming what ifs. Mm. And they wrote stories about if one little thing had changed, what sure. the state of the industry would be like. Sure. It was a really fascinating thing. What if but Sony I, and Nintendo didn't like explode, right? Yeah, what if some they of them were big, together? some of them were little, and yeah. they were all really interesting. But I, I want to see that alternate timeline you described. You're right. That's even more interesting if they had just doubled down on it. Yeah. Like could happen. they could they have made huh. people believe in it? Could they have? There would have been real parity suddenly between these two boxes. Mm-hmm. Like, would people have been I all wonder. in it? Who knows? 
Uh, exciting news for PlayStation VR fans. Moss has a release date. It is officially a week from tomorrow. So February 27th. Moss, of course, we played at E3. Let's Plays up right now. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, big fan of that one. Looking forward to that one. I'm still waiting for Randy Moss, the VR uh, pass catching. Oh, that'll be really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got to be right around the corner. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow, Cities Skylines on Xbox One gets mods. So you can put in whatever you want into your own little game. I have absolutely nothing to say about this. It's, you know. Cities is cool. It's like SimCity and you can play on consoles. Great. Uh, deals of the day for you. I got some Xbox deals via GameSpot. In the United States, start. it's already started. You can grab an Xbox One S bundle for $50, 50 off. Sorry. This includes the new one terabyte uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds bundles. That was recently released, bringing the cost down to $250, originally $300. The deal runs through March 3rd. If you're in Canada, meanwhile, you can buy the one terabyte Xbox One S bundle for $60 off uh, from now until February 23rd. If you would rather get the more popular powerful Xbox One X, you can get a free copy of PUBG with the console beginning already in the United States, Canada, Ireland, the United Kingdom, and Latin America. The deal starts February 20th in Australia, India, Korea, New Zealand, Singapore, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Wow. That's a lot of places. Hey, man. They're making it happen. It's a big old world. It is a big old world, and it really loves video games in it. Just like they love so many questions to kindoffunny.com uh -oh. slash KFGD for reader mail. Remember, reader mail is brought to you by our sponsor, Patreon.com slash Jared Petty. You can see right there. Oh, thank you. We are now $7,851 away from my beard being shaved. <laughs> right there. It's right around the corner. Uh, 2149 is where we're at right thank now. I know so a lot much. of you listen later on YouTube. Or I'm sorry. Watch later on YouTube. Listen on podcast services around the globe. Please consider hitting up Patreon.com yeah, slash Jared Petty. I, I want to live. I'm going to start with Kevin who wrote in. Not our Kevin. Different Kevin. But I'm not even Boges, Boges. Kevin, anyway, wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Happy President's Day, kind of funny. Not a question, but more of a warm welcome to the Reverend Jared Petty. Whoa. I could not be more excited to have one of the best gaming minds on kind of funny. I'd love to hear from Mr. Petty himself. What are you most excited about being part of on kind of funny? Keep fucking that chicken. And let's make it rain on that Patreon for the crew. Don't forget that hop, blip, and a jump. How did he know? Yeah, I know. We were so covert and good at hiding this. How did he know? You're fucking putting things out on Friday. You, oh, and you said way more than you said you are going to say. Uh, then I wake up this morning, and there's a tweet out at 6.30 in the morning saying you quit your job. You fucked this from the get. Did I screw you don't up? even like trophies. Did I screw up? What was the other thing you didn't like that I like? I forget them. Oh, man. man. All right. Well, anyway, uh, terrified and frightened that I, I forgot the question. Now that it is, that what are you excited about doing with us? That kind of funny. I, m the thing that I'm most excited about doing I already did this morning. I sat down in a little circle with you, sipping coffee, listening to you talk through the business of the day. And remember what it's like to come into that kind of creative meeting mm -hmm. with people that are passionate about sitting down and entertaining others day in and day out. There's a flow to th th I understand kind of funny is not news, but there is a flow to the an entertainment entertainment medium newsroom a, a creation outlet like this an editorial group that is unlike any other place i've ever worked and being around y'all being around you and tim and nick and joey and kevin and cool greg and and andy and sitting down here and just hearing that listening seeing the passion the matter of fact and day-to-dayness of it but the fact that none of it's taken for granted mm -hmm. the fact that you care that to hear the polish you're putting on every edge for the sake of the people who are already a part of your audience, people that you're just dedicated to serving because you believe in it. Yeah. I missed that part of this so bad. IGN had a lot of that. Sure. And I knew you guys had it. So Greg, honestly, more than any content we'll create together, that's what I'm most thankful for. Yeah. I'm most happy about it. About I just love having you around. You know what I mean? Like that was awesome to have you in the morning meeting today. We have a weekly meeting every Monday. Uh, kind of funny. And Thanks. talk about what's coming up and where we are. And yeah, that excitement we all have of who the guest is or what just got booked and this trip's coming up. But what about that? Yeah. And yeah what and we're just, gonna create and what we're gonna do. And seeing your just incredible sincerity. I, I don't want to embarrass you, but folks, he really, really cares about you. Yeah. I do. <laughs> you caught me off guard with that. Fuck you. Uh no, I'm happy you're here. Uh I obviously thank you for the support of patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You know, give us a buck if you're over there giving Jared bucks. <laughs> um, but no, like, you know, today's so special for me because of the fact that you're here and it's that what I've talked about before and what kind of funny games daily has given us is this outlet to bring people in and not just have them be doing us a favor mm -hmm. to bring people in and be like, cool. We work with Andrea. We work with you. We work with Gary that you are 
you know, the fa- the way Andrea has like, you know, kind of funny contributor in her Twitter bio. It's yeah. like, wow, that's awesome. And like, yeah. you know, something she wants to be a part of. Yeah. 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 Like this is a real thing. And we're able to take our small dream, right. And see how it's grown in three years and be able to help everybody else out and get other people in here. And gosh, grow. this had only been three years. Yeah. Oh, right. Man. It feels so much longer. Wow. The gray weird. hair makes it looks like it's been a lot longer, wow. but that's just what Kevin does to me. <sighs> you are you ever going to play monster hunter again? Or what's your problem? I didn't play it all yesterday. I cl- we cleaned the house top to bottom, and the place looks fucking awesome. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Yeah. You should you should come and look at it, and then just leave and not dirty it up. You, you playing that Monster Hunter try on your Wii? Is that what you're playing? I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Have you played any world? What world? Monster no, Hunter. I, I have been buried sure. in this. Uh, well, I, I have been playing games. Now but you're a raging success. You don't have to worry so anymore. I love Monster Hunter. I adore Monster Hunter. I'm a Monster Hunter guy, my so my, my world is is about to open up. Okay, good. Yeah, you got to get in there. Yeah, I'm kind of doing the grand tour this week. As soon as that's yeah, over, yeah. I get to dive back in. But I have been playing games. I've just been having to devour more bite-sized stuff because sure. sometimes you don't have the time in the week to throw as much into you like because Monster Hunter. That it's it's both a video game and a religion, and I want to experience it as both. God, it's so good. I miss it so much right now. What? You're just excited? Yeah. All right. We should play tonight. Okay. Oh wait, you're gonna go see a movie with Cool Greg? I thought though. Uh, we'll see you then, everyone. One hour. Tony, aka at Jericho TVB, writes in to kindoffunny dot com slash kfgd and says, "Hey, Greg and Jared, happy President's Day." From meeting him firsthand at Kind of Funny Live 3, I know that Jared Petty is one of the nicest human beings on the planet. He's nary negative and always tries to see the bright side of a situation. That said, I enjoy contrarian perspectives and hearing criticisms when deserved. And I don't know if Jared has that in him. I would like to give Jared an opportunity to prove me wrong. Jared, what's something that in the video game industry that really grinds your gears? Oh, welcome to lo- the kind of funny family. Tony. No, there's, oh, thank you for the welcome. And there's a lot. Please do not get the idea that nothing makes me upset. Uh, people are it's, have a tendency to elevate me on a pedestal. I'm a little uncomfortable with sometimes. <laughs> I have many flaws. I've made many mistakes and I've done many terrible things. Things. I and I continue to constantly get angry and say things I regret and 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 do things I wish I hadn't done. That's a part of life. And yes, there's plenty that that grinds my gears. One of the great frustrations for me right now is oversaturation. Mm. And what I mean by that is is how difficult it is in this present day and time to discover great games across marketplaces. I mean, the fact of the matter is there's in some ways more games in the small market coming out than ever have before sure. and fewer in the AAA market maybe yeah, than ever have before. 100% correct. Okay, so at the same time, there's less and less money for traditional games media, which means that everything's stretched to the limit. It's very, very hard to make money on advertising on the internet, which is, has really hurt those outlets quite a bit and, and consolidated them. And then we have groups like you that, are, that tend to be sm- uh, smaller bodies of people, very successful. But again, there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah. So both the the automated tools for discovery, whether it be the App Store or whether it be Steam, I, are simply at this point inadequate to the task of sorting through all that. And at the same time, while there are people whose jobs are full time to to go and find the best things about games in those places, and then there are people like you that are trying to introduce people to new things constantly, there's simply too much volume to separate the good from the bad. Wait wait till you get here. uh, We should have said this. You're going to be doing Thursdays for Kind of Funny Games Daily. So you will be here for every time Nintendo drops 18 games on the Mm -hmm. eShop all of a sudden. You're like, what the hell? Exactly. And we can't play them all. Nobody can play them all. And so, yes, we have the internet to help us share opinions. We've got our friends and that helps. But there was a time it was a little more manageable. There was enough money to make sure you had enough staff to cover most of the major releases. And at the same time, that there was not quite... It was easier to spot the shovelware at that yeah. point yeah, yeah. Uh, because a lot of games that are great and bad look a whole lot alike in their thumbnail art in the surface and watching. That's why all video. thumbnails look alike, right? Yes. When you look at like everything on the app store, it's all little guys screaming, just their faces screaming because that looks like every other game. And that's a problem I don't have a solution for except to stay here and try to tell you what I found that's good. That's what I want to hear. And to let other people do it. You know, there are brilliant personalities out there. I, I think of somebody like Chloe Rad, who's made it her mission in life yep. to make sure we find games that would be ignored otherwise. And, yeah. and they're, Marty's really good at that. And there's lots and lots and lots of people. We all have our different passions, but you have to seek it all out. It takes time. And there's just more and more and more coming. And for a guy who really enjoys indie games, that's especially difficult because discovery. So that's one place that I am chagrined because I don't see... 
uh, a great solution. There are other things. I'll go, I'll go off on some rants later. I, I, oh, you're going to be around long enough yeah, to do you've, some rants. You've yeah. heard me make uh, oh, you know, yeah. unpopular statements. I don't like John Wick. You've made a million unpopular statements yeah. in this episode. This is one of them. Now you've exactly. lost Kevin. Yeah. I don't like John Wick. That's a bad movie. That's wow. right. I said it. Mm-hmm. You are just. That beard. His beard is great. Oh, yeah. I like Keanu. That movie's bad. I never watched it. You know what? That man can't even take care of his dog properly. Damn. All right. That's all I got to say about that. You can't re- practice responsible pet ownership. Jerry, need to be Jerry an Petty ain't got no time for you if you can't right. re- do be a responsible pet owner. Yeah. I love it. Phil animals. the Executioner Ruiz. Riaz, Riaz, Riaz writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, hey, heroes. With the recent announcement on IGN that the Nintendo Switch was the number one fastest selling console in the U.S. this year with 4.8 million units sold in only 10 months, which is where I made a reference earlier. I'm sure I got picked apart and you're wrong that it had already done it, but I know it's, <laughs> it's coming up on being the most successful of all time. Do you think this will influence Nintendo to try to maintain this momentum by releasing other versions of the Switch, like a Switch XL with a bigger screen or a totally handheld switch without removable joy cons or whatever you can imagine. Personally, I can't think of a single thing to complain about with the switch other than having to be patient for certain games. Please smash brothers, please. But <laughs> I want to hear your guys opinions on the matter. Thanks for everything. Do you keep up the hard work? Much love the executioner. I will never make another prediction about Nintendo hardware ever again, as long as I live because they just sold me $150 with a cardboard. <laughs> All right. I just, you know, whatever, you know what? Just make it. I'm going to like it. Uh, 99 out of 100 times, I'm going to like it. Nintendo does weird stuff. They they, they made e-card scanners for Game Boy Advances for a while. Remember right. those things? Oh, yeah, yeah. Link and cables, they, all they sorts of stuff. Link cables. Although, you know, Pac-Man Versus is pretty good. Yeah, they did some weird stuff, but uh, I I give up, man. Remember we were all trying to figure out what the DS looked like? Mm-hmm. The Switch, I, we are all like, well, we're pretty sure we know what that is, but then you see the Joy-Cons, you're like, there's a Nintendo console without a D-pad. What? Why am I okay with that? Yeah. I, I don't so no I, I have no predictions I think everything you just suggested is entirely possible I think it's also possible they're going to sell you a pelican with a holographic projector that plays basketball and we're all going to buy it I because why I'd not buy that. I would buy would that be yeah. any weirder than anything else Nintendo sells I, I remember when this idea first came up and I was so quick to dismiss it of the like well how do you they won't redesign or they won't do this or they, you know, it won't be a drastic and Tim was like they for sure will Look yeah. and like because Tim's Mr. Nintendo around here. He's like, look at their history with every other thing they've ever put out like, in, a, in, in terms of a handheld, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I guess so. And so then it does get interesting. Of, I don't think they can. I don't think with the success they're finding with Joy Cons, especially because yeah. that's the biggest. Like, I'm buying new Joy Cons, and whenever I love a color, you know, and I, so, Are you? oh yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I Jen was like on the fence of like. Oh man, I could. I'll, I'm happy to keep using your Switch when it's time for Zelda. And then the Mario Odyssey bundle came out. And I'm like, I'm buying your Switch. Like I, I, but I'm taking those Joy Cons. Greg, I still have not returned my defective left Joy Con. Come on, man. I know. I just don't want to get rid of it long enough to. I don't want to not. I. But I don't even have an excuse. I bought four Joy Cons at launch. I have spares, so I probably. I haven't tried the other one, but I assume it's defective too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm gonna run out of time to turn them back in. So with anyways. the success that, like, I feel like. People like the Joy Cons and people do like detaching and playing their games and all those things. I don't think you can move away from that. So a bigger screen, maybe I don't know. And this is the problem: is I'm just not forward thinking enough to see. And I don't even know if I can get into the head of the nut job that is Nintendo to see what the hell they would think. But a bigger screen, sure. People talk about this every so often. A version that's just handheld all the time. I guess, but I don't really see why. Like you could, I, I really. First off, I think you have an engineering challenge at this point. Maybe in a couple of years, that'll be less true because sure. you know technology. Well, that'll be the very thing quickly. is like eventually the numbers will uh, plateau or decline in terms of how they're selling and the rate they're selling, and then you need to get a reason to buy a new switch mm-hmm. and whatever it is. But I mean, I would have never, ever, 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 ever been like, you know what they're going to do with the 3ds? Make a 2ds doorstop. Yeah, like this f- weird thing that doesn't even have the clamshell. It's just yeah, we're doing this 2ds. And thing. they have done a lot in the handheld space with that. Which which makes it interesting. When you look at their classic consoles, they don't actually do that much iteration. Yeah, no, it, and, that's, and that's where it gets weird is yeah. the fact of Nintendo still talks about the Switch as a, a console. We, I think, are always more inclined to talk about it like a handheld. Even, but it's it can do both. So how what what are they going to take from it? I, I I do think that they're going to eventually wise up and give you a mini dock that's easier to carry around and sell that you know on their own. Do you, what do you, of all Nintendo's like weird hardware forays? What, what's what's your favorite one? Like one you just like, not because you like the console, but just because you, you think it's neat. 
You have any of those? I mean, things? like, uh, you, you, I think you have to go with the GBA clamshell, right? Oh, the GBA clamshell's real good. Yeah, like, like that, was, that one, I mean, that was the thing of, I didn't, I thought the GBA was cool. I remember when they were getting ready to release it, and I was going down to college, and I thought about buying it. I was like, ah, fuck it, no. And then they put out that clamshell, and I was like, that's too hot not to get. All right, mark the time code. Jared's going to say something obscure in Japanese now. Here, Here we, we go. go. First time. That's right. No, um. No, it's, it's not that obscure. The Panasonic Q, you ever seen one? Mm-mm. It's a big, shiny, silver reflective GameCube with a big, bright light on the front and a DVD player wow. and a remote control Ooh. and a Panasonic branded GameCube controller. Isn't that huh. weird? That is weird. I love that thing. I had one in Japan. Loved it. Absolutely adore it. It was our DVD player. It was great. Oh, Oh, I've, this thing. Yeah, I love that thing. No, yeah, I've seen... Okay, yeah, I've, Fran has it. Yeah, I've, yeah I Fran saw it all the time, but I never asked him what it was all about. I just love how weird it is. Look at Isn't it cute? Because it's not much that, okay. bigger than a GameCube. Yeah. And it's got little, still got the two handles on top, because it's a little heavier. Yeah, you yeah. hold on to the other side. Yeah. Weird. Just love it. Look how it glows all blue. Just so nice. Oh, yeah, it's turned on over there. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that's uh, my favorite. All right, so I kind of derailed that a little bit. I'm mad, I derailed something? No, I can't what? imagine. I think yeah. I think people signed up knowing that was going to Yeah, happen. I think Don't that's worry. how this works, folks. I think there was another great subreddit comment of like, if it's Jared Petty, I have no idea how they'll try to keep the show to an hour because at any moment he can break into a whimsical story about 80s, 1980s Japanese jo- joysticks. Well, yeah, I would <laughs> love to talk like, about that. Yeah, I knew you would. Shut yeah. up. We're All running right. out of time. I gotta, made I'm going to lunch with Ryan McCaffrey. I don't want to be super late. Oh. So I'm going to give you a question like that, that I know you'll need to shorten up. This will be your final question. All right, right? we got Jeff writes in to uh, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD on the new kindoffunny.com and says, this one goes out to the new host, Jared Petty. Oh. What video game changed your life and how? Doesn't have to be your favorite, but caused the most impact. Okay, so yeah, this is a quick one. I, I This is like the most plug thing ever. Watch the video. Um, watch my first episode because ah, right that's there. entirely what jump. that's about. There you go. Uh, yeah, just just watch that. That's that I'll answer it in eight and a half minutes. There, um, it's because, really and you need to go watch it because that's great. Aw, that's the you. one that I'm telling you. It's a great video. It's really heartfelt. It's really awesome. It is different content on the internet about games, and I love that. If you love it, go to Patreon.com/slash Jared Petty. Check it out right there. Now though, Jared, it's time to squat up. <gasps> this is where one of you best friends writes into kind of funny.com slash kfgd give me your name username and platform of choice and the reason why you need best friends to play with on the internet oh. the friends find you y'all play video games together and have a good time today hsccmc needs help on the playstation 4 psn name is of course hsccmc now you know of course i say the reason why you need help right I- on the form it says why should people play with you? Or why do you need people to play with? Something to that effect, right? Why should people play with you? HSCCMC responded to that question on the forum saying, very laid back, plays with hilarious girlfriend most of the time. So if you'd like to meet this hilarious girlfriend in a very laid back HSCCMC, befriend him or her on the PlayStation 4. That's the PSN name. Oh, more jobs for you. Oh, what we got? What we got? Uh oh. I'm going to do a rotating segment here, all right? All right, what are we doing? But while I do that, you need to go look at kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and start. Because the kids, they editorialize. Okay. They get in there and they're like, this isn't a correction, but I want to. And you got to say, no, that's not that's not what we're doing here. Right. So from now on, when I get when I get to the squad up section, you should probably okay. grab this. Okay, I'm going to grab just, that. You go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Okay, kindoffunny.com yep. slash. All right, where are the forms right now? We, yeah. You're wrong? Yeah, all right, yeah. There we go. So now you look through them and start getting ahead, ahead of it and see what we're going to read, all right? Okay, so. Right I'm, now, I'm going to tell you about this rotating right now segment. I'm seeing August 2017, so I'm definitely doing something. Well, that's something the top right. post where I yeah. started it, right? right and then you so go down a little bit and you start seeing people. Right. Right. But yeah. no, you just. Now, shush, 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 because we have a segment we're inserting here. This is a returning segment. This is from Space Ghost, and it is. This trophy can go fuck itself. (laughs) Having sunk around 100 hours into Monster Hunter World, it's obvious to say I'm loving the game. Around 90 hours, I decided, hey, I'm going to check out the feasibility of obtaining the Platinum Trophy. Angry Greg voice. And then he puts angry Greg voice. Get fucked, Capcom! The crown trophies in Monster Hunter World are absolute garbage. Specifically, Giant Crown Master, which requires you to obtain a giant crown for all, almost, in quotes, almost every monster in your hunting log. First off, what the fuck does almost mean? 85% of the monsters? 90% of the monsters? Everyone except a single elder dragon? Why be so vague, Capcom? In addition, it seems the crowns are completely random and cannot be easily farmed. So yes, I have to slave away and pray to Shuhei Yoshida that those sweet golden caps drop for me. End Greg voice. 
Well, I'm gonna send my prayers to the Reverend instead. Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily, Jared. Aw, Space Ghost. That's very kind. Thank you. We hear you, Space Ghost. Right. I'm not even. I I've looked briefly at the trophies and I was like, you know what? I love this game enough that I'll see if I ever need to worry about it later on. Jared. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up live so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listening on podcast services around the globe. What did we screw up today? We screwed up six things today, Greg. Okay. Six. A baker's dozen, perhaps. Very good. You're fitting right in. You're fitting right in. So first off, uh, this comes from Zyger1337. You'll know Zyger well by the end of this. Oh yeah. I know the Zyger. Okay. Absolutely. Jared said, I don't know what I'd look like without a beard. I'm fairly certain I would look like a left butt cheek. Jared is wrong. He is adorably handsome young man Aww. who is loved by everyone in the community under the beard. Aww. But please don't shave it. It completes the look. <laughs> also, why the left cheek? Answer, because I have a tattoo of Greg on my right. All right, there we are. So there's that. Second, uh, from IGN Akiorigas. There we are. Ignat- Ignacio Rojas. Is that it? Yes. Okay, wow. I feel so terrible. I'm, let me look at it, but I'm pretty sure I Yeah, it. yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. That's Ignacio. I thought it was IGN. I saw those first three letters, and I was trying to make a... Make a oh, there we are. Don't worry about it, man. When talking about Metal Gear Survive, you said Kojima isn't the only person that can make a good Metal Gear game. Give us an example that people who made Odyssey weren't the same as made the original Super Mario games. The difference is that Miyamoto did have an influence on <laughs> Odyssey's <laughs> development, whereas Kojima didn't. That's true. True. Kind of Funny Games Daily. You're wrong from BG2580. Not a you're wrong with anything you said per se. I just wanted to say that you guys were wrong for not getting Jared earlier. Much love, Jared, and to the whole Kind of Funny crew. He had a job. We couldn't, I mean, again, like, you don't understand. Like, you notice we're not hiring people full time. We can't afford people. <laughs> we can afford you to come in to be a contributor. <laughs> Our next one, Malcontent Ronin uh, says, oddly enough, there is, in fact, one man who can play every random Switch game coming out. That man is Brian Altano. Barap, barap. He does touch a lot of them. I'm, very, I'm always very impressed that when somebody drops the switch, he's playing yeah, fanboy. He, even he doesn't know how he does it. Well, having a wife uh, and two or now three jobs, I guess he's referring to the uh, possibility of being on here. No, no, Weird Heat. Oh, right? we're, oh he's, talking he's, about he's weird got heat. IGN, uh, Comedy, and Button, comedy and Button and Weird heat. heat. Of course. Goodness gracious. Shout out to Weird Heat. Good yeah. stuff. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this. Oh, well, this is from uh, KBABZ. Kebabs. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and call this one a perfect. And he uses the uh, Street Fighter perfect. This sprite is from Street Fighter 2. Also, if you pronounce my username Kebabs again, Greg, you can rescind the perfect. It's like a shish kebab. Come on. I know how I'm supposed to pronounce. I know how you want it pronounced. But I'm telling you, you spelled it the wrong way for it to be pronounced that way. Kebabs. Are you saying he's in perfect? Imperfect. All right, there we are. The, uh, lastly, hi, Jared, longtime fan of the world's most huggable games personality. Aww. I think that's Anthony Gallegos myself, but uh, both in body and spirit. You were always a warm beacon wherever you were in the ever-rotating third chair. Oh, that was a long time ago. The old Beyond days. And I'm beyond excited that you have, oh, it's beyond all caps. I'm beyond excited. There you go. uh, That you make my Mondays or Tuesday time zones brighter. Uh, From uh, Zyger yet again, Greg said the GBA clamshell, just for characterization, uh, clarification, Greg is referring to the Game Boy Advance SP. The SP stood for special. That's true. Are we also referring to the special serial number model with a brighter screen? I, I hope so. That's God, that, cool that, that, I forgot that serial number. Yeah, yeah. 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 Altano has one of those, speaking of. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yep. That's all of them. Good. At least that's all I see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for giving Jared the warm welcome. Again, if you're listening later, remember patreon.com slash Jared Petty. He quit his job. He needs your support. Head over there. Of course, while you're there, if you hit up patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, it helps us bring in new people like Jared or Andrea or Gary or Danny before he was an idiot and moved to Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> um, we love you. We put out this show each and every weekday. Remember, you can get it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listen on podcast services around the globe. Jared, yeah, your show is up right now. Everyone should yeah. go watch it. Patreon.com slash con- or Jared Petty. Sorry, old habits. You know what? Just call it whatever you like. Yeah, but get that over works. there and do it. Uh, you're making you said you were making the rounds. What are you? Would you want to say what shows you're on this uh, week? Let's let's let uh, let's let them announce it when they choose. Cool. Uh, however, I'll be back here for Gamescast and also I'll be hosting uh, alongside, uh, I believe it will be Tim Gettys. You're right. Uh, yeah, this week. Thursday. Yeah, as Thursday. you move into your, your you're actually on Thursday and Friday, Friday in the morning show, right? No, uh, you're or not the morning show. Pardon me. Games Daily. Yeah, yeah um, but I'll Thursday be, will be your normal slot and that'll be when you're back. Yep, so you're going to be seeing quite a bit of me for a while. Tomorrow, this is hosted by Tim. And until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Thank all of you.